Now I have been living with Erika and her amazing grandmother for about one month. It feels so incredibly healing to live for a while in a proper home again with a proper new family. Olha, tienes que pôr o sapo. Ainda não tá, Yoyo. Yoyo has made a cake, a cake. The cheesecake factory. Tchau, tchau. Yoyo. Tá cru. Queres ver? Não, é com palito. É com palito. Why this doesn't go to the bloopers? My God, look at this. We spend our days cooking and baking a lot and admiring the views of the sunrises and sunsets out of our windows. I'm able to work on my projects while Erika practices for her next musical theatre shows outside on the balcony. Every day our love seems to be growing and I cannot believe how close we already are. I can only guess that our crazy history of meeting and getting to know each other can explain that. If you think about it, it's pretty crazy if you have a first date that lasts seven days where you are hitchhiking and wild camping intensely on a beautiful island and then after that when you see each other again you just decide to move in together for a while. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to your YouTube! I'm so happy to be here! Woo! Too much. <laughs> Why this is go to the bloopers? <laughs> Anytime you say it goes to bloopers, it's not gonna go to the bloopers and it's gonna be in the video. <gasps> no! <laughs> oh wait, you started. Okay. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay. How do we start? Oh wait, I'm not in my best position. Okay. Okay. Good morning, people of the universe. <laughs> we got into the habit of waking up it's like when the like sun is rising, which is right now about seven. And it's amazing, like the morning has some kind of really strong energy, I think, which just gives you a lot of strength for your day if you can watch the sunrise and see the sunrise. And where I'm from in Germany, if you are in fall or in winter, mostly the days will be cloudy and rainy and, and dark, even in the morning, you know. But here in Portugal, it's we crazy. It's every day. It's almost every day. <laughs> sunshine and blue skies and if you do the thing you are more difficult to you on the sunrise that is on the beginning of the day you get ready for the rest of the day so sometimes we do workout uh, when we are not too lazy and <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> times we meditate and other times we just get out of bed which is really really hard yes so <laughs> <laughs> this morning uh, we wanted to talk about how we met because yes. many of you were asking how we actually met on the Azores and it's a pretty crazy and 
con co how do you say it? Unique coincidental coincidence coincidence coincidental story. My God, it's early. <laughs> and yeah, so how do we start to tell this? It's pretty complicated. Yeah, <laughs> we start from the beginning. Let's start. Well, I was in the Azores, and I was trying to hitchhike a sailboat to get off the Azores, to get back to the European continent, to then try to catch a sailboat from there across to the Canaries and then across the Atlantic this winter. And while I was doing that, I met many people in the harbor and I always gave them my paper, which is like a print of my sailing information, what I want to do, my experience and my picture and my contact and my phone number. So I gave this paper to all the people, even if they said no, we don't need crew because I always think, ah, oh, maybe, maybe they changed their mind, or maybe someone gets ill of the crew and they need more crew, and then they can call me, or they meet someone else who might need crew. So I always gave the paper. paper. Uh, and then I it was my turn. And then uh, I was doing an uh, inner journey in Azores uh, to figure out what I truly wanted in life when I was like only. Um, walking uh, with uh, uh, my many many kilo backpack sleeping in the nature things like this and i was going from the most uh, from ponta da ferraria to nordeste and then going back to ponta delgada and this was almost six days and on the first day i found a bird on the street and the bird was really healed so he could not fly anymore so i thought oh maybe i can take care of the birds in his final hours so I was with the bird, and then I went to this, I went to camp, right? And then I went to this huge, huge storm, and I was like almost dying, and the tent got all soaked inside because I had holes in my tent, and many things like this, and I had no food, no water, and I was almost dying without any people there. And then I called a, a friend, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I cannot anymore <laughs> something like that uh, it's 6 a.m. and then he said oh okay okay calm down calm down please take care of the birds and I was trying for the birds don't die with all this water inside my tent calm down I have a friend in Missouri then and she can um, help you uh, she's called Daniela I give her uh, I give you her number okay and then and the second day uh, it was good, and the third day was good, and then it went all good. And then I called Daniela just for fun, and she never answered me. And then uh, uh, it's my turn again. And then, <laughs> and then I was uh, back in uh, mainland Portugal. I, I called Daniela just for fun again, and then she answered, and she said, "Oh, we can take a coffee." Yes, you can take a coffee because she was um, really adventurous and she was sailing with her boyfriend in Azores actually. And then we went for coffee. Na, 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 na. And then I said to her, uh, "What were, what did I find out on my trip? What were my ambitions in life? What did I wanted to do?" Blah blah blah. And then we talked for hours, and then suddenly she said, "Oh." You remind me of someone I met in Azores. Oh, really? Yes, it was this weird guy. No, she did not say weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was this guy that was, he's almost your age, and he, he was trying to eat hike around the world. Uh, he was going to America, and he asked me if I was going to America, but I didn't need it. But I, I, he gave me his paper, and I thought, hmm. I need to save this paper for some reason, I don't know why. And she's really spiritual, she's like an ancient fairy. Yeah, and then ah, I was going to save the paper. Look, there is the paper, I took a picture. And then I, I looked at the paper and it was like with this picture of, of a straw in his mouth. A thing I, I usually do, you know, on my free time I choose straw. And I had a picture almost the same, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna send him a message. Maybe he can help me uh, of the things I want to do in my life, because they're all, almost the same as what he's doing. And then I sent a message saying, hi, I'm Erica, this is my Instagram. 
and I have a picture like you. <laughs> and then I sent him the picture of me chewing the straw too. And then it's your turn. <laughs> no, you said you said directly the first message. Yeah, we should meet up. Yeah, we should. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said that too. Yeah, it was like I was a couple days later when I gave the paper to actually Daniela which was sailing or arriving with her sailboat with her boyfriend in that harbor so I gave that paper and I had a small chat like telling about my story what I do and then I went again and a couple of days later I went to the harbor I was trying to hitchhike a sailboat again and then suddenly as I was sadly not finding any boat and looking at my phone walking out I suddenly saw a message from an own unknown number and there was this amazing message you know from a very very beautiful girl in the profile picture and I thought like hmm it sounds too good to be true is this like someone trying to scam me a little bit or someone trying to play a joke on me because my my phone number hangs on so many marinas because I always put my paper there and you know the chance of someone finding my number and just playing a joke on me pretty high so <laughs> at first I didn't believe it but <laughs> Then I decided, okay, I have to give it a try, of course. I mean, this sounds really, really amazing to meet such a person who has a very similar passion than I. So I wrote back and then we started to send voice messages. He wrote back, oh, should, are you in Azores? No, I am in Lisbon. Oh, should I take a spontaneous flight to Lisbon now? No, 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 this is what you misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why not take a spontaneous flight to the Azores? No. No, or to see me or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. It was but like... I, I was telling you to fly to me. <laughs> okay. Not, I was never telling... Uh, I would fly to you. <laughs> I thought but you were joking me. But we only found out like two weeks <laughs> yeah. later that we misunderstood both of our messages. <laughs> and, and then... We had like this crazy long voice messages, yeah. like 15 minutes voice messages. Yeah, and then I had to write what I wanted to say in the voice message. He it was, it was sending 15 minutes voice message. I, I could not remember everything I wanted to reply to him. Yeah, it was getting too much to talk about at once in the voice messages. <laughs> yeah. So we decided, oh, we need to have a phone call to talk about all these things. And then we had a phone call which lasted like five hours yeah. through the night. And we did many pee breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pee so many times, yeah. and it was just amazing. We had this connection on the phone, and we just couldn't stop talking, and yeah. it was so interesting, and we were already getting close on the phone, I felt like. And then we said, like, okay, we definitely have to meet, and then, yeah, uh, uh, I was kind of trapped on the island. Yeah. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then I I called my best friend. Oh, I met this guy. Blah, 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 blah. And she was like, "Whoa! You just found the love of your life. What are you waiting for?" And then I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and then I went to search, and I I bought a spontaneous flight to San Miguel again, like one week after. And then I said, "Oh, hi! I'm going to San Miguel in one week." And he was like telling all the people from the hostel, Whoa, whoa, this is... Yeah, it was crazy. Suddenly she had a flight book to the Azores. Yeah. And this was like pretty special to me that someone is so brave and courageous and kind to just book a flight to see me. And yeah, thank you that you did it. Now, it's now we're here sitting on your balcony. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, it was crazy and then she just showed up and I walked to the airport for two hours. <laughs> now you have to say that you lost... Uh, he was almost... Ah uh, yeah, you say, you say. What? That you were almost um, uh, not in time but then you found the right. And ah. you said and you said you want to meet a girl and you tell the story and then this guy was not going to the airport but he loved the story so much then he drove him to the airport. Was that... Ah, yeah, I get a ride. Yeah, true. I forgot that, but he didn't drive me all the way. He drove me yeah. like half the way. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it was still a lot of walking, <laughs> but then I made it in time, luckily. Yeah, yeah. And then you just came running at me at the airport. Yeah, he was in his period shirt. <laughs> <laughs> My red shirt is called period shirt for some reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> we had seven days of 
wild camping and hitchhiking on the Azores and it was absolutely crazy yeah. and amazing. And in those seven days we fell in love with each other and then we decided we need to see each other again of course and hopefully we can travel together in the future and have amazing projects together and it looks like we can manage that I continue my Hitchhiking Around the World project and she will join part-time and full-time sometimes yeah. and do her own project and this whole experience again showed me that many times life only makes sense looking back like the dots are only connecting if you look backwards and many times you kind of have to trust looking forward whatever happens to you that it's for the good of you or that it's gonna lead to something good in the future because there are so many coincidences that we met it's quite crazy yeah like all this all this journey when I started in March to leave Germany to travel west to hitchhike west around the globe and then all this crazy journey and a broken mast and then the pandemic stopping my sec second boat to Canada so then finally I was trapped for five months in the Azores and that's the reason that's like on my side the coincidences or the the dots that brought me to you yeah. and then on the same day that he um, started his hitchhiking to uh, the east I actually broke up the west to the west yeah I'm no good at this yeah I actually <laughs> I actually broke up my previously relationship went to Azores for the first time and decided I wanted to be a travel blogger and then I did all this inner journey but uh, I was going to to London to a university in London but I didn't want went and uh, I did the inner journey and all these crazy dots and over here. <laughs> neat, neat. <laughs> Cut. I'm so grateful for all this time full of love and peace. And it's important because I need to gather a lot of energy for the soon to come and probably very uncertain and adventurous Atlantic crossing on a sailboat I didn't find yet onto a whole nother world, onto the American continent. Thank you so much for your precious time and enjoying this adventure with me. If you can't wait to see how this journey will continue, you can get instant early access to the next episode on my Patreon page. This project is only possible through your support on Patreon. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.